Hey, welcome everybody. Glad that you could join us for our daily devotions today. Um, man, it is getting to be winter time, isn't it? You can feel it. The days are getting darker. And actually this coming Sunday or early, early in the morning Sunday, we're falling back. So we actually get an hour of sleep, extra hour of sleep. It's going to be exciting. So don't forget to set those clocks back so you don't miss anything. So this uh, series, let's talk about, it's been a good series. I don't know if you've been joining us. If you haven't, uh, please go back and uh, watch some of the different uh, videos for the sermons that we've been going through. Uh, David's been tackling some tough questions that not only do we have in the church uh, now, but also that culture is asking too. And we've been able to dig in the word and he's been able to have some good clarification for some of the questions that people have. So make sure you jump into that. And we also have a uh, workshop coming up in November 18th, Holy Sexuality with um, Dr. Christopher Yuong. And he is going to be talking about the different ways for us as Christians to be able to view and talk about and approach uh, some of the biggest things when it comes to sexuality, transgender, same-sex attraction, those different types of things that we can approach that with not only grace, but truth. As David told us this week, that's so important for us to do. So we're going to be talking a little bit um, about some of the verses David talked about. He talked about what is it like to be uh, salt in this world? And what is it like to be light in this world? And when he's asking about what does it mean to be salt in this world, salt was something they used uh, to preserve and to flavor things, to make things better. And light, you know, clarifies and helps highlight the things around us that we can see those things better, right? So um, David was kind of challenging us not only to be advocates for the gospel and the kingdom of God, to be, but to be activists. And when you think about that, you think about um, protesters and people you know, tearing up things in the street sometimes when you think about an activist, people who are violent. And so we're going to talk a little bit about how God is calling us to be activists, not the protesters types that are tearing up the street and burning down buildings or things like that. But, you know, the question we have to ask us is, ourselves is, how can I be an activist for the kingdom of God? And how is it that God might want to use me in my context and in my circle of influence too. So real quick here, we're gonna read out of Matthew 5, 13, and it says this, you are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? Well, the truth is that's impossible. The saltiness uh, for food, once it loses that, it is worthless, it's tasteless. So it says this then, it is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. So that's an interesting thing. And then the other verse says that you are the light of the world. So it's calling us out to be these two different things. And both these things are kind of the same thing that you would see an activist doing, uh, minus some of the, the negative things that you see, because they're, what they're doing as activists is they are bringing attention to something that they feel is important and needs to have attention brought to, right? So activists are, like I said, they're not always violent and marching in the street. And sometimes as an activist, it's not about marching through the streets and protesting. Sometimes it's living in the streets among the people and speaking and doing life with them as an influence and an example. That's that salt and that light that David was talking about. So when we ask, how can we be an activist for the kingdom of God? And how does God want to use me? Um, sometimes God just helps instruct us and move us towards uh, what he's asking us to do for the sake of the kingdom of God, right? And he knows how each of us are wired and how we're, we're each um, gifted in how to do that. But we need to be not only vocal, but we need to be living this life of love and grace and truth and generosity to bring attention to the kingdom of God. Isn't that right? So we got to understand a couple of things. And these are a couple of things David highlighted. He said that we can never 
fully transform this world. And that's because Satan is actually the ruler of this world. And this world's passing away. And we even know that the Bible tells us that there will be the coming, the second coming of Christ and all the, the old heaven and earth will pass away and there'll be a new heaven and new earth, right? And so when we think about that, we know that this world isn't created for eternity because there's going to be a new world, a world where Satan is not the ruler of this world, right? And that we, the, the new world we have will already be transformed, so we don't have to transform that. So we can actively work towards helping to diminish sin at this time. It'll never all go away, but we need to work at helping to diminish that sin because sin brings us brokenness and this destruction. So we need to help uh, work on a regular basis actively like an activist, right? Uh, to be able to influence people towards godliness. And, and that's the kind of activists we need to be. That's that salt and light that David was talking about. And somehow we need to be able to provide a contrast that, that brings interest and attention to Jesus Christ and to the gospel. So many times um, it's hard because people want to know that we're different than the rest of the world, right? When they see us, they want to know that there's something different about following Jesus because we say it, it's different, right? So they're curious to see that difference. So as activists for the gospel, as activists for Christ, as activists for God, we need to show them the difference between following Jesus and following the world, right? And so we need to be that salt and light in our daily lives. What does that look like? It's different all the time for us. It depends who we're around and what we're doing, but it is done with grace and truth and love. And Jesus has called us to be in the streets among the people living among them so that they can see the contrast be between this broken and fallen world and the grace that God has given us the forgiveness that we're living in and the changed lives that God has given us and restored us to and the light that lives within us. And you know, sometimes we, we don't have to be out there screaming at the top of our lungs, doing street corner preaching. And maybe that's what God's called you to. I don't know. And I'm not saying he has or he hasn't, or that's not a bad thing. But our daily lives need to reflect the difference that the gospel makes and the difference that following Jesus makes in our lives so that people can see and experience transformation in their lives. My question to you today is what has God called you to be an activist to? How has he called you to operate among people who don't know Jesus so that they might experience the freedom of forgiveness and the new life that is only found in Jesus Christ. I want to challenge you that today. Ask God, if you don't know how he wants you to operate, ask him where you can step out, where you can be salt and where you can be light in a world that is dying for hope. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that you have called us. And God, uh, help us not to be fearful in following you. Help us not to be fearful, to be act activists for the kingdom of God. God, let us be excited that you have called us, that you have chosen us to do this work. And God, let us do it with a grace, but also let us not forget to, to show the truth and tell the truth in love that people might come. God, guide our, our words, guide our actions. Give us wisdom that we might impact a world that is seeking you. They don't even know that they're seeking you, but they're looking for a hope that will never die. And that is only found in Jesus Christ. Lord, we love you and we thank you. Thank you that you give us time together. Thank you, you give us hope through your scriptures and be with us as we go through this week that we might step out to be used by you. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, thanks for joining us. Have a great week.